Welcome everybody, we're back today with another Streamception video. I get to show you OBS Live, this software that you can use for streaming. It is brought to you by Stream Elements. My name is Navitz, I'm representing my esports team, the Sploosh Troop, within one minute. I'll show you how to go live on Twitch or any other streaming service with OBS Live. Let's get started. Step one is gonna be to install OBS Live from either the Stream Elements website or OBS.live, which is an OBS knowledge base for live streaming. It contains OBS Live information, as well as additional information for streaming with OBS. Quite a few articles and useful information. Then, once you install it, you're gonna be back here, except for this this part of the screen is gonna let you log in with Twitch, and that will give you access to the toolkit that Stream Elements has made available for streamers. The toolkit from Stream Elements includes things like a dashboard, theme gallery, overlays, chat stats, activity feed, media requests, profile pages, you can set up revenue, tipping services, a loyalty system for your viewers, modules for your chat bot, chat commands, spam filters, timers and a state-of-the-art overlay editor that allows you to choose from hundreds of themes or start from scratch so you can build yourself a theme that looks like this but first you're gonna go ahead and do the auto configuration wizard let's get started optimized for streaming next next connect to twitch use your stream key um, I'm gonna click this link button it's gonna open up my twitch page don't show your key to anybody under any circumstances post it back in here click next take a look apply settings wow we are ready to go live all i have to do is click start streaming so technically now you can go live with obs live but we would just be sending a blank video signal until we configured some sources let's figure out how to use all this stuff what these components are and then soup it up with some stream elements tools on the left hand side we have an activity feed on the right hand side we have a chat and below that we have media requests these are three stream elements components the chat is your twitch chat the media requests i will go into a little bit more detail later it is like song requests and things like that and the activity feed shows you recent things to happen in your channel who followed subscribed hosted and you get the ab ability to pause skip mute and mute alerts and reload overlays. You can also move these around and rearrange how everything goes. You can do that with the other components in OBS Live as well. You can drag and drop them around and rearrange them if you want things to be in different places. Now you're seen, that's all the information at the bottom left here, and that's what you see in the middle. In the middle here, this is your scene. Your sources are things that you can add to each scene. So in this scene, I have a video capture device, which I just turned off, and I have a display capture device, which I just turned off. You can see they disappear. Once I turn those off, I can move them around, or alternatively, I can lock it and not be able to move it around. So if I click here, I'll click on the background source and not be able to click on my um, webcam source. That is how you kind of build your overlays for your stream. Now, when you want to make a separate scene, why would you want to make a separate scene? Well, you could play different games, for example, like if you played uh, Dota 2 and Fortnite, you would want to have a different scene for different games. You could go over here. I have a different one, but I'll just show you. You click this little plus button, create a new scene, scene three, and there we go. We start with a blank scene. If we want to add sources to the scene, we have a slew of different sources available. I'm going to right now just add the video capture source that I had before. Um, I could add a new one. I could actually add a second webcam if I wanted to, but adding a video capture device, and here I am, I'm back on the screen one more time. A couple additional notes, you can configure special aspects of your sources um, by right clicking on them and modifying either the properties or the filters. So for properties, this is my display. I could change which display I'm using or in my video capture device, if I went to properties, I could set custom settings. I did that here. I set a custom resolution. The default resolution was square. I set it to 1080p. And I have also done an additional thing for my webcam, which is applied a filter. If I take my filter off, as you guys can see, I have a green screen behind me. So all I have to do is click down here, add a filter. There's a numerous options that you can play with if you wanna get into it, but when you have a green screen, you add the chroma key, add it back. Oh, it already exists. I'll just turn it back on. I'm sorry, it's the same name. That's fine, we're back on, and that is how you have your filters. Next below me, I have the mixer settings. Those let you set your audio configurations, and then scene transitions. This is when you switch from scene to scene. It creates a cool transition, whether you wanna set it to cut or fade, or an additional one, you can create your own and import them. I've done that for a replay script that I use, it's pretty cool. 
um, we have controls over here and then at the bottom right or at the very bottom right stream elements live support along with additional information right here that just tells you um, if you're live how long you've been live if you're recording how long you're recording the CPU usage the frames that you're getting it'll tell you if you're dropping frames while you go live and it's telling you what your version is down here you can start streaming you can start recording or you can go into studio mode studio mode is super cool check this out um, what this lets you do is make trans make changes to your scenes on the fly without disrupting your actual scene so you can see there's two two versions of what you're what, what's going on here if I click scene two or scene three uh, this one to the left the audience will not see I can make modifications here I can move my webcam around get it set up and then transition or switch to the scenes or I can just uh, turn off studio mode and go to that new scene that I modified going into the settings I'm gonna try to do a concise overview of them without being too technical the general options let you change obviously general information about the program like uh, the output dialogues that show up the snapping configurations uh, for the windows uh, whether you're using projectors stuff like that the stream this is let this lets you configure your service that you're streaming on so as we can see twitch YouTube whatever we want the server you can automatically set this which is recommended or you can set your own server if you know where you live <laughs> it's not that bad of an idea to think about it stream key you can click link get your own stream key don't show your key to people because then they can stream from your account now the output by default I don't know what it's going to set for you for me it has set this uh, the video bitrate if Twitch's limit is like 3,500, I think, so you can't go above that unless you're a partner. Um, and if you have bad internet, this will also cause you to lag and drop frames. The encoder, the hardware encoder versus the software encoder. I like the hardware encoder. It uses your video card. The software encoder would use your CPU. Um, I use my video card over my CPU because I play Dota 2 and that's CPU intensive. Recording paths right here. We can change our recording paths to anything we want or we can set our recording quality to the same as stream. Recording format, I changed it from FLV to MP4 earlier. Uh, I like saving it as MP4 because then you can use it, uh, you can use it in, in video editing software. Software. Desktop audio, I changed this just now and I set it to default uh, and that will allow me to have desktop audio captured. If I'm playing music in the background, it will capture it in the desktop audio right there. Uh, and then I can add different audio sources if I want, but right now I will not do that. Video. Video, my base canvas resolution and my output scaled resolution, this is dependent on what you get back from your speed results, what uh, your computer can handle, uh, how, how powerful it is. If you have a very powerful computer that ha and you have really good internet, you can do 1920 by 1080 and have it output at the same resolution. If you don't, you can scale down the output resolution to something like 720p and set your downscale filter. It makes it pretty easy for you and you can also lower your FPS if you're having issues. So 30 by, I would go 30 by 720 if you're having issues doing 1080. Hotkeys, this is where you can set different hotkeys to switch between scenes and do other things. I only have one set right now because I didn't set up or configure any scenes and the advanced options, we will not delve into those, but if you guys want, you can check them out. That is the settings for OBS Live without getting too technical. At this point, you should have all the tools you need to be able to set up your own stream and configure it the way you want. But we're going to talk about the Stream Elements tab now, and we're gonna start with activating overlays. Now, activating overlays is how you can soup up your stream and make it look pretty sweet. It's going to take you to Stream Elements, and you have the option of a bunch of overlays here. This is the theme gallery. I'm going to sort by game because I play Dota 2, so I'd like to actually do this. So game, we're gonna go Dota 2 search real quick and there's a bunch of different themes available here if I look at this blue moonstone which I was just looking at this is what it looks like this is an animated theme I could use the animated one but I feel like animated is just too much all the time so I'm gonna go with the static theme which is directly below it and I'm going to create this overlay when I create it this is going to be my blue dota 2 overlay and I click create Creating your overlay will give you different browser sources. I've already applied the first four. I'm going to do the last one with you. So I click here to copy it, and then I'm gonna go back here to my scenes. This is my regular scenes. As you can see, I've created the new ones for in-game, talk, start, BRB. And last, I'm going to add a source to the end game scene. It's going to be a browser source. I'm going to call it end, uh, end scene browser. 
and it will give me the option to configure a browser source. I will paste the URL that was copied and I will set my width and height to 1920 by 1080 because that 1920 by 1080 because that was my base canvas resolution. And now I have an end game scene. As you can see, um, we also have a be right back scene, which is pretty cool. We have a starting soon scene, which is counting down right now. And I have a talking scene, which will show chat to the left and let me put myself right there. Actually, that talk scene was pretty awesome. So let's go back and use it. We're going to add a video capture device. Here I am. I'm going to shrink my webcam a little bit. Put myself in the middle suddenly I have a screen to talk to you guys on and I'm going to demo how we can modify the aspects of these browser sources so when you create an overlay it will add them to your my overlay section and stream elements we're gonna go find the overlay that I'm using which is talk scene right here I'm gonna click go to uh, overlay editor and inside this overlay editor I can make the modifications that I want to each individual element I can click it I can move it around if you move it it's hard to put it back be careful when you're moving stuff um, um, but I can go here and type uh, Twitch name slash Navits and there you go as you can see that updated now down here I click save and after I save it it should show up in my browser source but if it doesn't show up right away it's here right now but if it doesn't show up right away sometimes it, it, it caches you go to your browser source double click on it and click right here refresh cache of current page it will force the page to refresh and bring all of this back in if you're wondering when we're gonna get to alert notifications they're already done everything is configured within this browser source and you can test it in your editor your stream elements editor you can see all of the emulation type right here we're going to emulate a follow event so if I click emulate follow event it's going to put a follower above me now let's say I don't want that follower to be there I can go back to the editor and I can move where this box is so let's say I want to put it here uh, I can move it there and then I can click save event is saved and we will test that event one more time emulate the follower event and as you can see it has moved to over here that is how we have all of our events set up a quick side note, you can test any of your browser sources inside of a browser. So hover over the launch overlay icon, click it, it's the first one, and your browser source will show up here. Let's finish this project off by adding an in-game scene. I've already added my webcam here. We're going to add a game finally. What you do is you add a source, you go to game capture, and you select, uh, you type in the name of the game, mine is Dota 2, you select uh, from capture full screen application you go to capture specific window the window should be available in the window list underneath and there is dota 2 as you can see so when I click OK there it is but it's on top of my other video sources great opportunity for us to learn that whichever uh, which elements are on top of which matter as you can see, this overlay was specifically designed for Dota, my webcam box in this corner, my information box in that one, and information at the top left and top right. Let's see what it looks like if I hide my browser source for a second. So hiding it and then re-enabling it, hiding it, re-enabling it. You can see the difference in the gameplay or the video that your viewers will see. Now media requests, they can be set up to be either free or paid. If you click settings, they can be free via tip, free or paid. So if they are via tip, you need to have your tipping configuration set up. And you can also at the same time set up a chat bot. When you click the stream elements tab, the bot and tipping setup allows you to set up both of those simultaneously. It'll let you put your financial information in and set up your bot. For those of you who've been streaming for a really long time with stream labs or using other software, Take a look at the stream elements tab and click import from other services. It will give you the option to import your data from the other services such as chatbots and stream labs. You can import the alert boxes, tips and overlays. We are going to use the stream ending scene that we created to end this tutorial on OBS live and streaming. I appreciate everyone who came through and checked this out, whether you're a new or an experienced streamer, hopefully there was some information for you. If you have questions about the video, go directly down to the comment section where I will reply. If you have suggestions for new videos, I'll do that while you're there. You know, give me a thumbs up and subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, if you have questions about the software, the software questions go to Stream Elements Live Support where you will be linked to their Discord. On behalf of Stream Elements and my esports team, the Sploosh Troop, I thank you guys one last time. One love.